Hi guys, welcome. Get comfy, it's story time. Are you ready? Then we shall begin. Hi guys, I just quickly want to apologise for how short this video is this week. I did have permission for one more story, but before I was able to record it, it got deleted. So if I can sort that out, it's possible I may be able to include that in a future video. So anyway, I hope you enjoy this. Probably ten years ago, I had a dream that I didn't totally understand. In the dream, I was travelling with my family. We had driven through New Orleans and happened to pass by the neighbourhood that, in my dream, my parents described as where my mum grew up. Together we decided that it would be fun to stop by the house my mum grew up in and greet the new homeowners. After talking to them a bit, I asked their permission to explore the house and began walking around the front yard. I remember specifically in the dream going to the left front corner of the house, examining the gutter, bending down and digging briefly through the sand. Sand? I really didn't understand this part at first, before I found an old glass ring. This is as much of the dream as I remember. One day, years later, my mum was talking about getting her glass ring remade, and I told her about that dream. She couldn't believe it. Apparently when she was in high school, she had traded class rings with a boyfriend, and the boyfriend wore the ring around his neck. One day, she, her boyfriend and her siblings were playing out in the front yard. The guy was swinging one of her brothers around, and her brother grabbed at the necklace on her boyfriend's neck. The chain broke and the ring went flying towards the left side of the front yard, near the gutter. They searched and searched, but it was never found, and they eventually moved away. My dream self found that exact item in that exact spot. Now why was the sand that I dug through significant? It seemed like the only out of place part of the dream. Mum told me that their yard was always full of sand. Considering that New Orleans is essentially a city built on the marshy delta of the Mississippi River, the land is always uneven and sinks by a few inches every few years. In order to maintain housing lots, New Earth has to be brought in to fill the sinking land. My mum's family was poor, however, and the sand was far cheaper than soil, so the yard was always sandy. Mum had never before told me the story of how she lost her class ring, nor had I ever seen pictures of it or been told a single detail about what her childhood house had looked like, and yet the description of my dream exactly fit the reality. Mum was always a believer in people having psychic gifts. And considering a few similar experiences I had, she was a firm believer that I was born with these gifts. Hello, long time lurker, but first time poster. So this happened back in 2005. I live in a small town in Pennsylvania and every year my town sets aside a Saturday to celebrate itself. It's called Nazareth Day, if anyone is interested. Mostly it's a craft show with some local musicians playing and an excuse for the small businesses in town to attract some customers. The kind of neat part is that at night the fire department sets off fireworks at the local park. It's a nice display that lasts a pretty long time so it can get super crowded in our little town with people from all over the area coming to see the fireworks. My friend who would later become my girlfriend of almost three years now, but that's a different story, and I decided to walk down to the park that night to catch the show. It was only about a ten minute walk from my house, and I knew the way like the back of my hand. I had been living in the area pretty much my whole life, and my grandmother's house was right by the park as well. I had no problem getting there, and my friend and I enjoyed a wonderful evening together. By this point it was around 9pm and we had decided to head back home and spend the rest of the night chilling at my house. The trip should have taken us only another 10 minutes tops, but somehow we managed to get lost. Again, I walked this path so many times before that it should have been second nature. I had walked back the way we came. I remember walking past my grandmother's house. And then that's when things got strange. We hit what should have been a main road that's normally relatively busy, but somehow we ended up in a new neighbourhood. I was confused, but I didn't want to alarm my friend. She had just moved to the area from out of state during the school year and was unfamiliar with the town, so for all she knew, I was going the right way. 
I kept trying to assure myself that I had just made a wrong turn somewhere and trudged on, trying to find an area that looked familiar. The strangest part to me was how quiet and dead the neighbourhood was. As I said, we get a lot of visitors to see the fireworks, and they had just ended, so we should have been passing lines of cars leaving and seeing the people who lived close by walking home like us. Instead, it seemed as though everyone were in their houses already, and there was no noise to hint that a large gathering had just taken place only a couple of minutes away. I thought about knocking on someone's door to ask directions, but the idea made me feel uneasy, and I was sure that I could find my way out of it if I just kept wandering. After a few minutes of this, my friend finally seemed to pick up that I was lost and started to freak out a little. She suffers with some anxiety disorders, so understandably, being lost in an unfamiliar area kind of triggered her. We sat down on a nearby curb and waited for her to calm down a little before I explained that I think I made a wrong turn, but that I could find our way back to the main road. She was sceptical, but what choice did we have but to continue on? I honestly don't know how long we wandered around. Neither of us had cell phones yet, so we couldn't check the time or call someone to pick us up or look up directions. I still kept considering knocking on someone's door, but I was both scared to do so and stubborn. This was my hometown, and God damn it, I was going to find my way back. At some point, we had passed into a more rural spot just outside of whatever town we were in. We could see some bright lights through some tall bushes and pushed our way through them to get a look. That was the other strange thing. The neighbourhood was oddly dim, so the light was a welcome relief. I had thought that maybe we had found the main road again, but what we saw instead left us frozen in our tracks. Somehow we were on a cliff, and below us was this brilliantly shining city. It looked like something out of a sci-fi movie. The buildings were strange shapes and they were towering into the sky. There was nothing like this around my town. Most ways you want to take out of the town would take you to nothing but open cornfields. I remember looking over to my friend who had this wide-eyed look that seemed to demand some explanation that I couldn't give. As all expiring as this newly discovered city was, it gave me an extremely unsettling feeling, and standing there gawping at it wasn't going to help us. When I say we were on a cliff, imagine standing near the Hollywood sign and looking down at Los Angeles. So we headed back through the bushes, and just like that we were on the main road, where we should have been to start with. There were cars going by again, and the neon glow of the local 7-Eleven had never looked so inviting. We headed in to take a breather after what happened and grab ourselves a drink. The clock in the station read just after 1am. It didn't feel like we had been lost for four hours, but perhaps we had been, or maybe time moved differently wherever we had ended up. I spent years trying to convince myself that I had just taken a wrong turn and that perhaps I had been overlooking some nearby town that just looked so majestic given the circumstances of being lost. I retraced my steps so many times trying to find the neighbourhood we had been in and the cliff we had ended up on. I was never able to find them again, and my friend and I never talked about the experience until about two years ago. The fact she remembered it just as vividly makes me believe that something strange really did go down that night. Anyway, I found this thread a few months ago and kept going back and forth on posting this story. It was only when I stumbled upon a post while scrolling through the top posts of all time on this thread that I decided it needed to be shared. As I said, I'm new to Reddit, so I'm not sure how to link to another story. Here's their URL, though. The main road I kept referring to is the one that passes right in front of the hotel mentioned in the story. The area that we emerged from through the bushes that night was just a few feet away from the hotel. I got chills when I read the story, and I knew that I had to share mine. Here's a map of the area this happened in. The H is my house at the time, the P is the park, the poorly drawn G is my grandmother's house, and the question mark is where we ended up. The blue line was our path to the park, and the red line was our path home. I also circled the 7-Eleven we stopped at. My grandparents have both passed quite a few years ago, but one of the stories that they told me has stuck with me all these years. My grandpa and grandma were driving through Pennsylvania to an old family farm. The farm belonged to his uncle and cousins who lived there. 
Grandpa was a city kid and had visited the farm every summer for years as he was growing up. It was around 25 years since he had been, but he loved that farm and wanted to introduce Grandma to his cousins and show her around the farm. As they drove closer to the farm, Grandpa began to tell Grandma about the little town that was on the road on the way to the farm. Soon they reached the little town. Grandpa was amazed that it hadn't changed a bit. Towards the end of the town they saw that a hotel was on fire. The road was blocked by firemen using an old-fashioned fire wagon with a water tank pulled by horses. They thought it was strange, but they chalked this up to being in rural Pennsylvania. Eventually the water wagon moved and they could drive on. They reached the farm, and after greeting Grandpa's uncle and cousins, they shared the news of the fire at the hotel. Grandpa suggested that they all go down to see if they could help. The relatives looked shaken. That's where one of the cousins explained that there was no town. Not anymore. About 20 years before, the hotel burnt down, and the fire spread to most of the small town's main street. After their businesses were lost, people left the town. In fact, the uncle and cousins were the last people living in the area. Grandpa and Grandma couldn't believe it. They had just seen the town, the fire, even smelled the smoke. Grandpa, Grandma and some cousins got in the car and drove back to the town, going back the same way they had come, and the town was gone. Just some burnt out shells of a few buildings remained. Update I called my mum after I originally posted. She remembers the story as well. Mum says that it happened in the 1940s, sometime after 1942. So it may not have been the late 40s. She agreed that it had been 20 to 25 years since Grandpa had been there. His last visit was in his teens and he had been to college and was an established chemist before he married for the second time. Also, this was a very small town. The nearest big town to the family farm was Nazareth. Big thanks to the Mad Who for finding this link. This could be the town that burned.